Okay, so you've just read Atomic Habits like everyone else in the self-development space. One day after and you decide to kick things off by waking up at 6 a.m every single day one week later and you've managed to wake up at 6 a.m for seven days in a row Woohoo! one month later and you still haven't missed a single day of waking up at 6 a.m however you don't feel any different you don't even feel accomplished even though you're waking up two hours earlier than usual essentially nothing changed you still feel like the same person just one who wakes up two hours earlier this is the exact issue i faced about one and a half years ago after reading Atomic Habits. This video is not going to be just another summary or review of Atomic Habits. There are lots of those videos on YouTube if that's what you were expecting. Instead, we are going to apply all concepts from Atomic Habits to our lives in such a way that it will actually have a life-changing effect on us. The reason for this is that I've read a ton of self-help books, yet when it comes to applying the contents to my life, I nearly always struggle. So I figured I'd make a video on how to actually change your life with self-help books like Atomic Habits. If this one works out well, there will be more to follow. All right, let's not waste any more of your time and get straight into it. The identity shift. First, we start off with our ideal identity. Bear in mind that in this case, we want to change our lives and not just build a new habit, which is why we are going to start off at the end and reverse engineer the process. James Clear highlights this in his book as identity based habits. He explains that our daily habits embody our identity. Make your bed and you're an organized person. Read a page per day and you'll become a reader. Write a page per day and you'll become a writer. Sure, there's some truth to that, but again, we're aiming for a life-changing result by implementing atomic habits. Waking up early for me was not enough as I mentioned before. So the question we should ask ourselves at this point is who do I specifically want to become? To clarify the issue when not asking this question further, I'll take the most common aspiring habits as an example and explain why they are not enough. Waking up early. When I finished reading this book, that was one of the habits I wanted to develop. It's the one habit that according to 99.999% of the YouTube self-development space will set you up for success. Well, no. Even though waking up early is definitely not a bad habit to get into, solely doing that will obviously not change your life. If you wake up at 6 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. and still start off with messing on your phone for an extra two hours, your life will simply not change at all. And I must admit that I learned this the hard way. I woke up earlier than I used to, but I didn't put the time to good use. Consistently going to the gym. This is another one I had to figure out myself. Solely going to the gym daily will not always make you feel healthier and more energized. Of course, it will make a difference. Over time you'll grow some muscle and gain strength but the question you should again ask yourself is if exclusively going to the gym will actually have a life-changing effect for me it did not because of my bad eating and sleeping habits on which i'll elaborate later in the video and last but not least spend less time on social media i think we can both agree that everyone with an iphone ever wants to spend less time on it now to do what stare at the sky reflect on all past mistakes i've made again spending less time on your iphone itself is a good thing but just doing that will not make a significant difference as to actually changing our lives james clear also highlights this problem in his book with a good example but never encourages the reader to fully reverse engineer the process. In this book, he states the following. The impact created by a change in your habits is similar to the effect of shifting the route of an airplane by just a few degrees. Imagine you are flying from Los Angeles to New York City. If a pilot leaving from LAX adjusts the heading just by 3.5 degrees south, you will land in Washington DC instead of New York. Such a small change is barely noticeable at takeoff, the nose of the airplane moves just a few feet, but when magnified across the entire United States, you end up hundreds of miles apart. Similarly, a slight change in your daily habits can guide your life 
to a very different destination, which is why we are going to start off at the destination. By starting off at the destination, I can clearly define which keystone habit will kickstart my journey towards becoming my ideal identity. As per the first example, I do not simply want to be someone who wakes up early. I want to be a more productive and efficient person who coincidentally starts working earlier in the morning. I also do not want to consistently go to the gym. I want to become a fit and healthy person with massive amounts of energy every single day. I don't want to simply spend less time on social media. I want to become someone who uses his free time for fulfilling tasks like reading books or spending time with family. To really shift into these identities, we obviously need more than just one habit, which we'll define with the habit ladder later in this video. Now that we have our ideal destination, it's time to start off with part two, the reverse engineering process. The reverse engineering process asks one simple question. What single habit should I start doing today so that I can have my ideal identity in one to five years? Yes, one to five years. Actual life-changing results take time, dummy. Okay, back to the point. Why are we reverse engineering this process? You might still wonder, because if we do not, we might start off with the wrong habit, which is what I did last year. I'll again use the three previous habits as examples. The identity shift I want to make is to become a more productive and efficient person. Starting off with waking up early might seem like a good start, right? Well, no. For me, it was not. When I reverse engineered my ideal identity, the one habit that actually made a difference was to leave my phone in another room whenever I started working. I thought I needed more time to get things done and be more productive. Turns out I just needed to minimize my distractions as a start. It was also way easier to do compared to waking up early since I'm kind of a night owl, I guess. The destination of becoming a fit and healthy person with massive amounts of energy also did not start off in the gym. Of course, going to the gym daily made a difference for me, but as soon as I started to take my diet more seriously, I felt like my health and fitness actually made a big improvement. Movement. The habit that I started off with was fasting until roughly 1 p.m. every single day, followed by a meal low in carbs. By doing this, I maintained way higher energy levels throughout the day, which actually led to better and longer workouts at the gym as well. Get specific. Okay, so before we define all habits we need to have to achieve our 2.0 identity, we need to get specific. So boys and girls, pull out your journals because it's time to have a conversation with yourself. The more specific you can get with your ideal identity, the better. You don't want your ideal identity to be like the Iron Man Mark 1 suit, but more like the V50 suit in Avengers Infinity War with nanotechnology. So some of the questions you could ask yourself might be the following. What do I eat on a daily basis with my ideal identity? At what time do I go to bed and at what time do I wake up? How do I spend my time online? Do I exclusively use my online time to become a better version of myself or to gather more knowledge? Knowledge. What do I do as soon as I wake up? And what do I do right before I go to bed? The more questions you ask, the better. We basically want to know every detail about the 2.0 version of ourselves. The way I see this is using your phone to get to a destination versus a paper map. Of course, both will work fine, but your phone will tell you which turns and exits you need to take at every intersection. With a paper map, we need to figure this out ourselves, which will obviously take way more time. The habit ladder. Now that we have our specific final destination identity and our initial habit that will kick things off, we are off to building the habit ladder. And yes, I made that up myself. The habit ladder is a bunch of habits which will together lead to us achieving our ideal identity. This is very similar to, but should not be confused with, Habit stacking. Habit stacking, for those that forgot, means that we're stacking a new habit on top of an existing habit to decrease friction. You can still apply habit stacking with the habit ladder method. However, 
to ensure this method is sustainable, we are focusing on a step-by-step -step approach. Let's start off by applying this to the identity of being a fit and healthy person with lots of energy. The first step was to start off my day by intermittent fasting followed by a low carb meal. Once this is part of my life, what would the next step be to achieving this identity? In my opinion, this differs per person. My personal approach and what actually worked for me was to take my diet even more serious. Since fasting followed by a low carb diet actually made a significant impact on me, I decided to double down on my nutrition. My next habit was to take mindful grocery shopping even more serious, aka getting in the habit of only buying healthy food when doing groceries. I tried to cut down on processed food, buy more foods that are high in protein and replace sugar with stevia drops for my tea and coffee. Once I had this locked in, my focus shifted towards the third ladder, which was consistently going to the gym. Taking the habit ladder approach actually made the habit of consistently going to the gym way easier as I felt more energized before and during every workout. Are you finally getting why the habit ladder approach works? We're not just aiming for 1% better each day as James Clear wants us to do. We're not just growing exponentially, but we're also increasing our growth rate with every step we take. As James Clear states in his book, 1% better every day will get you to be 37 times better after one year. However, if we use the same compounding maths to the habit ladder by adding a second habit after six months and the growth rate of 2% per day, we end up with an exponential increase of being 48,000 times better after one year. Okay, obviously compounding does not work like that with habits, but you get the point. The identity shift simply happens faster by going up on the habit ladder. And this, brings me to the valley of disappointment. The valley of disappointment is the period in which no significant changes happen, even though we're taking action. Since we're theoretically doubling our actions after six months, we're reducing the time it takes to realize these significant changes. So if you're still following along and already wrote down your ideal identity, it's time to note down all steps of the habit ladder. To make this easier, I'll use one of my own ideal identities as an example. And yes, feel free to create multiple. So mine is to be a fit and healthy person with lots of energy. As I already covered, I started off with intermittent fasting and a low carb meal for breakfast. Then I doubled down on this by getting into the habit of buying healthier groceries. Only then I focused on consistently going to the gym, which was a lot easier at this point. From here, my next focusing habit is sleep. This is my current ladder. I want to make sure that I sleep at least eight hours every single day. I should add that I have not yet mastered this one, but I've already planned out my next step in the habit ladder. This one will be to incorporate cold baths into my routine a few times per week. I think that as soon as I master this one, one, I'm near the top of the ladder, but obviously that's subject to change as yours should be as well. The notion template. So to make defining your ideal identity and using the habit ladder easier, I made a notion template with journaling prompts for your ideal identity and a habit tracker that you can use to track all your progress. I'll probably list it for like 10 bucks and don't worry if you do not think it's worth the listing price send me a DM on Instagram and I'll send it to you for free. You taking the time to get this far into the video is already very much appreciated. To conclude this video, I want to provide you with your next read and also ask you a personal question. If you're looking for the next book on habits, I'll have The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg linked in the description, which provides a deeper insight into the psychology behind habits. The question I want to ask is what book do you want to actually apply to your life next? Let me know in the comment section and I will try to make a video out of it. As always, thank you for watching and I'll end off this video with a message from Uncle Thanos. Uncle Thanos here. Now that you know how to change your life with Atomic Habits, it is time to like and subscribe or you will be decimated.